One thing that's cool about a kick-ass muscle car is the sound. Everybody likes the way a V8 engine rumbles and, you know, a loud engine sounds powerful and, and people tend to like that, but they might not like it all the time. You know, maybe you're driving the car to work every day or, or maybe you're taking on a cross-country cruise and you don't want something that's going to be droning in the cabin and making it hard to hear the conversation or hard to hear the stereo and just giving you a headache. So that's why around here we like to use Magnaflow exhaust kits because the sound of a Magnaflow kit is nice and rumbly at idle, but then it kind of goes away until you really stand on the throttle. And there's a bunch of other reasons we like them, which we'll get into as we show you the install of the kit on our 65 Chevelle. Beyond just sounding cool, Magnaflow exhaust kits offer a bunch of different benefits, including the fact that they're all stainless steel, so they're going to last forever. The mufflers are a flow-through design, so they don't restrict power. Uh, they all have mandrel bent tubing, which means the, the tubes are all smoothly bent and there's very little restriction there. Uh, some kits offer you a variety of tailpipes and tips to choose from in the same kit. Uh, they come with these high-tech slip clamps that are reusable. And in all the different cars we've installed these on, never once have we had to bend a tube or pound on one or smash them or cut them or weld them or do anything to make them fit. They always seem to fit really, really well. We found the easiest way to install one of these systems is to start with the mufflers. Uh, the, the hanging hardware is pre-welded onto the muffler from Magnaflow. You just put the rubber hangers on and assemble the hardware that bolts to the chassis. And once you get both of the mufflers hung from the car, you add the True X, which is an X-pipe, uh, which helps performance of the whole exhaust system by creating a scavenging effect where the opposite exhaust pulse uh, tends to pull the other pulses down the tubes. It also helps to mellow the sound out just a little bit. In front of the True X, you have the uh, extension pipes that go to the headers of the manifolds. And here, you're gonna have to measure these a little bit and make sure they're the right length and trim them to fit and add the type of connection that your header or, or uh, manifold has. In our case, we had a traditional uh, three bolt header flange and we got a stainless one because we wanted all of our system to remain stainless. So we tacked it in place using our HTP MIG welder loaded with stainless MIG wire. And once we figured we had it in the right position, uh, we took it down and welded it completely on the bench. A tool that can be helpful when you are putting these pipes together for sizing up you know, where to make your flange weld to the pipe is a pair of uh, locking style tube pliers. Uh, we got a set from Eastwood. They're adjustable and they will hold the pipes in place so you can tack weld them and then finish weld them on the bench easily. When we final welded the uh, header flange onto our front pipes, we bolted them up using the appropriate gaskets and some new hardware and then we started to work towards the back of the car. And being on a lift, it's easy to do, but what you want to do is kind of get these things worked in place and, and use the clamps to tighten them snug and then walk away from it and eyeball it to see that they're hanging evenly and in the right place and that they look good. You don't have one side hanging lower than the other. And when you're happy with the way they're, they're in place, then you can start to snug everything down a little bit more. And then uh, you go on to the tailpipes. Uh, out of the mufflers, we started hanging the pipes that go up and over the rear axle and then the, uh, the tailpipes, which are gonna you know, poke straight out the back. And Magnaflow intentionally leaves these long because there are multiple tip options with some of their kits. In our case, we we're torn between a straight, polished, like a pencil tip, and one that had a slight turn down. But we couldn't do anything on the car yet because we didn't have the bumper in place. You know, we were building this car basically from scratch and you don't wanna get that wrong. So, we took some time to install the bumper and then decided to use the turndown tips. And we did something a little bit differently here. Once we slipped the tip over the, the tailpipe and figured out what length that pipe needed to be, we trimmed the tailpipe down. And what some people do is they'll just slip that tip over the tailpipe and put a couple of blobs of, of MIG weld around the back side of it and be done with it but we wanted this to look a little bit cleaner and the tips are stainless, so you can weld them and polish them again. And what we did is slip the tip over the tail and zap them with the MIG welder on the inside of the pipe so that uh, you wouldn't see the welds from the outside. And it left a few marks on our tip, but we easily filed those down on the bench and uh, sanded them 
and then ran them through a whole routine of, of course to find buffing and polishing and made them look like a mirror again. And then we painted the uh, support brackets that come with the kit and slipped it all back on the car and we were left with a, a polished tip that didn't look like it had any weld marks on it at all. It was real clean. When we had everything looking the way we wanted to, it was time to check the other big payoff and that's how it sounded. So we started the car up and uh, we were rewarded once again with that nice throaty rumbling idle sound. But when you rev it up, um, you know, real high RPM, it, it gets pretty gnarly. But on a normal cruising RPM level, it's quiet in the car, you can have a conversation and you, you're confident knowing you're not losing any power at all thanks to the mandrel bent design and that flow through MagnaFlow muffler. Now, you're not quite finished yet because invariably there's gonna be some little leak somewhere, something that's not exactly right. So before the system gets too hot, uh, if you, you know, crawl under the car and put your hand around each of the uh, seams and each of the clamps, you might discover one of the clamps is, is puffing just a little bit of exhaust pressure out. If that's the case, loosen it up, move the clamp a little bit, you know, tighten up that leak and then crank everything down. Uh, we tend to use a little bit of anti-seize on all the clamps so that the bolts squeeze down cleanly and um, they don't gall or bind. And it makes for a really slick system. And I gotta warn you, if you put one on your car, uh, be prepared to get involved in conversations at the cruise night and parking lots because everybody wants to know what it is.